Uh, the third uh, kind of algorithm that I was trying to talk was clustering based on uh, animal detection. Uh, so clustering is one of the most popular concepts in the domain of unsupervised learning. Uh, in clustering based animal detection, the assumption is that the data point are that the data which are similar will belong to a similar group as well. Uh, so this determine uh, which will be, which that similarity will be will be determined by uh, some distance uh, uh, metrics like it can be a gradient or anything or, or which different algorithm will use different techniques. Uh, so the anomaly score is then calculated by setting a threshold for the size of a cluster or distance to the cluster centroid. And we can say if, if uh, a cluster has data point less than the value of threshold, they are marked as anomaly. Or, or if the data point distance to a center of the cluster uh, exceed the threshold, you can flag it as anomaly. And K-means is, is uh, one of the example of uh, making all this cluster. So there are lots of algorithms. So if you can find any kind of algorithm for clustering, basically you can use it. If you have any favorite clustering algorithm, like it can be K-means, hierarchical clustering, uh, it can be DBS scan, or any, or any. There are lots of algorithms that ha that that has been developed, and during the workshop we'll try to play with them as well. And the, and as I said, the only the the, the whole idea is uh, group them. If the size of the group is super small, then maybe they're anomaly. And if you have a point which uh, is super far from all those. Uh, so for all those clusters, there, then maybe that point is anomaly. So, uh, as I said, one of the kind of one of the most famous one is a famous one is K-means, which basically uh, by different K-means is, is like a widely used in clustering algorithm and it creates k singular cluster of data points. Data instance that fall outside of this group could potentially be marked as anomaly. And cluster with less than n sample can also be anomaly as well. So, so it means uh, to be able to define uh, the the uh, anomaly, you will need lots of uh, kind of. Uh, you have to define some hyperparameter, and and then you have to define some metrics as well. So, first of all, what will be the best k for your data, and then even once you have the k, what will be the best distance metrics? Is it going to be a gradient? What will, or, or cosine similarity? What will be the best for your data? And once you have it, then you will have lots of groups. What is the best threshold? And like, what will be the, the number of threshold that you, you should say if a cluster, a, a cluster or a group of samples are smaller than that predefined threshold? Maybe that's uh, that's actually an anomaly. Or you can say if you have a new point or a point that the distance of that point to any of those k clusters is more than a distance threshold, then maybe that's the layer. So to be able to use k-means, uh, you uh, aside from all those metrics that you need, aside from all those hyperparameters actually that you need for uh, making a, making all those clusters, you will need two new maybe uh, threshold as well that you have to define. And based on your data set, you have to use different numbers. Uh, the other algorithm, which is uh, one of my favorite one is density, uh, which is uh, which is DBS scan. is a is a density based anomaly detection actually method. So DBS scan is, is like a clustering algorithm that is used uh, for sure for clustering data into groups. It is also uh, it also used as a density based anomaly detection method. DBS scan groups uh, to get their point that are close to each other based on a distance measurement, which can be still Euclidean or anything. And uh, and if and it also mark as a what layer the point that are in a low density region in your data. So DBS scan has like a three important concept uh, core point, which will kind of define the cluster, which will be based on all those hyperparameter or parameter that we will see uh, later. There is a border point, which are the same, which are they are in the same cluster as a core point, but uh, they're like a further away from the center of the cluster. And, and lastly, it would be uh, every, so everything else will be called noise or like a noise point. These are the data points uh, that do not belong to any cluster. So they can be anomaly or 
uh, or, or not normally based on uh, your uh, investigation or maybe some threshold that you will define. So to be able to uh, kind of define the uh, DBS scan algorithm, as I said, you will need at least the, you will need uh, two parameter to be able to define it. One of them is like epsilon, which specify how close point should be to each other to be con considered as a as a part of a cluster. So it means uh, that uh, if a, if the distance of two point is lowered or equal to to that value to that uh, to that uh, epsilon, epsilon uh, this point will be considered as a neighbor. So that will be kind of like a threshold of the distance that you will define. That you will say that if two points are closer than that value, they are part of a cluster. And the other pr parameter is minimum point, which basically means uh, uh, will the minimum number of sample or point that you will need to make a cluster. And if if the number of point number of core point are less than that minimum point, then you won't have any cluster in the in that in that in that area. So based on these two uh, parameter, you will define a cluster uh, in your in, in your data set. Uh, and so okay, DBSCAN has its own uh, challenge as well, which basically would be similar to the K-means as well. Uh, first of all, if this uh, this would be what would be the best uh, epsilon? If it's like a too large or too small, it will has its own problem. So if the epsilon value is, is, is too small, like a large part of the data will not be cluster, uh, and and uh, it will be considered like a layer because don't uh, don't satisfy satisfy that the number of uh, the the number of point to create a dense region. And in the other hand, if the value that has been chosen is like super high, clusters will merge, and majority of the object will be in the same cluster, which kind of like a k-means if you have lots of if the k is super large or is super small you kind of might have the same problem and even uh, finding what is the best minimum point in your data is another uh, hyperparameter that you have to define so like uh so it means they're saying that like okay, okay maybe one of the things that they're saying is like minimum points should be more than the number of dimension that you have but what the thing is that minimum point will define like what is your measurement? That would be kind of like the, the the threshold of the what is a normal cluster, and if if anything is, is less than that, maybe is is just a cluster of anomalies. Is not maybe a normal. Maybe that you can say that area is not dense enough. So to find the best epsilon and the minimum point is uh, something important uh, to be able to have a good uh, clustering algorithm using DBS scan. Uh, and the other thing that I was uh, trying to talk about was something that probably uh, you haven't seen anywhere else. Uh, even I tried to look it up, it was hard to find it anywhere, which basically I call it like semi-supervised and maybe using shuffling. Basically the idea is if you have your data set, then you can like, well, like if you have, if you remember, one SCM, the idea was you have just one class. And then if, because you have one class, you want to learn the boundary around it. But the problem is the boundary can be super, like uh, the boundary can be super close to all the dot nodes or, or it can be a little bit further from it. What will be the, exactly the area? To be able to learn the, the, the maybe the distribution of uh, the data, they're using generative models. The one class, uh, one SVM or one class, one class classification tree to learn the boundary, but it for 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 me it was super hard to be able to do that. And then one of the idea can be why not generating some fake data? So you can say that okay, I do have lots of normal, and I know they are normal. I don't have any labeled data, but they can create lots of let's say not normal data. How it can be just using shuffling. You can just shuffle uh, all the columns and uh, in, in your data set and call that the new data set maybe negative samples. So it will be kind of like a noise uh, that you're generating. And then the, the basic the idea is then if you use those uh, these two class and then you want to learn the boundary around your data, the positive one, uh, can you just do that? Then 
because you will have two class of data. You can use any kind of super, uh, supervised models, like it can be neural network, can be anything. And then probably you should be able to learn a boundary around your positive data. But the thing is, is it going to work? Uh, that would be a question that we will see in doing the workshop. For some of the data set, actually I will try to shuffle some of the columns to generate some not normal data. And then we'll try a model to tell the difference between these two. By telling the difference between these two, we're kind of uh, making a boundary around your normal data. And basically the, the idea would be if that fake data is good enough or they, they have to have like, like they are in, in a part of a data set that will make you to be able to define a good boundary on your data, then you should be able to find a boundary on data. So from that moment, you should be able to say what is not normal if a new sample or if a normal sample is not in that area. So, so it's not like a, a formal techniques, I would say. So take it with a grain of salt. But uh, the idea is like, that was one of the things that actually I tried uh, back then when I was trying to see how can I find a better binary uh, around my data. And then the other question would be, how can we make uh, the gener generative part which uh, a lot better? How can we come up with a way that instead of just using shuffling, how can we make a better fake data or better generated data? One of the ideas can be maybe GANs, because as we know, they are trying to make lots of new samples. And because they're using adversarial process, they try to make a better and better and better samples closer to your data. So maybe there are lots of techniques that, uh, that you can try and, and then you can make lots of fake data. And then the only thing that you have to do from that moment is like, is like the, the discriminator of a GAN which the only thing that it has to do is tell the difference, right? So basically that idea can be a dumb version of GANs, which means you, that supervised model will be the discriminator and the generator is maybe a human, genera the human generator or maybe just a shuffled one generator, which maybe will be a dumb version of generator, but basically it will be a generator data. So, well, I will try to do that. So before, because for next session, we'll try to talk about GANs as well. So that's why for, for uh, this part, I was trying to see if the whole idea of generating some sample and then having a model to be able to tell the difference, going, tell the difference is going to work or not. So that's the idea. The other thing that we will try during the workshop would be Sales supervised approach. So here, uh, actually, we can. Uh, so, it, so it means uh, if you don't have any labels or if you don't have anything that you can that can tell you what is not what is good, can you just use your own data as uh, and and use it as a, as or make a new task around it, or as a, as I said here, learn to predict some part of your data. So the idea is like find a task, anything, it can be anything, and then train a model to do the task on, on, on those all those normal data, and then monitor how well does the, the new unseen data will perform in, in your model. And, and then you can say if poor performance and new data, maybe it's a sign of anomaly. So basically you can define any task, and then and it, it means like in insurance companies, you can say maybe the uh, the 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 cost of the claim or the length of the stay of the of the claim or in the image you can you can say that okay uh, what is just maybe remove a part of it and try to reproduce it or in text it can be prediction of the next word like language modeling or how BERT is working it means it it removing one word from the sentence and trying to predict it so it's kind of self supervised approach and by that you are learning your data. And once you have a new data, and if you can't get a good number, good score from it, then you say that maybe my new sample is a bit off. 
So the, the idea is like if you choose a good task, uh, one that is hard enough, uh, the model will learn like some high level concept about that training data. And it will find interesting correlation, interaction, regularity, and then to become confident in some uh, predictions. And then, then wants to have a model which can perform good enough. Like it means if I just use maybe cost, the model, the disco might not be good. So then I can switch to different tasks with the length of a state. So I have to find a task that the model can actually find all the pattern about it. And then I should be able to get good score on my training data. And then uh, that then we can say that this thing will likely break for a new observation that are very different from the thing that you have seen in my training data. So basically using, then here I'm still, the thing that I'm doing is like I'm kind of converting my animal detection to like a supervised, or as I said here, like a self-supervised approach that I can just use any kind of supervised model, like neural network, uh, even uh, random forest exhibits, to predict a part of it. And then I can just use it. And then you can say that from that moment, if any sample, if it is an any sample, I can get good score based on some threshold. Then I can say maybe that sample is a bit off. So something is wrong about that sample. And then I have to investigate it. And that's actually the idea of uh, self supervised learning. And because I talk about Two way, two two way of uh, finding anomaly based on like a, a supervised way. Then maybe it's good time. Is it maybe that's the best time to actually talk about what is the measurement of the accuracy of the models. See, uh, sometimes you don't ha even for those semi-supervised and unsupervised model, which you can actually use one SVM observation forest or kill clustering or chain in the thing that you use uh, last week. But the thing is you might have some small amount of labeled data, which you can just use it maybe for the test. It's not enough that you can make a model around it, but you can use it as a test. Or you have data, like labeled data, but you just wanna uh, see how all these models performing, which will be the case that you will have in the workshop. We'll use uh, some label data, like for credit card, we will, have, we will have a label for all of them. And for MNIST, we'll have the label. And then this, the idea is like, what will be the best measurement of the accuracy? And as I said, the anomaly detection is a special scenario. Uh, always there will be an, an, an like, uh, unbalanced distribution between anomaly and normal. Usually in your data set, you will have lots of normal and super, super small uh, like a anomaly in your data. So due to, to the nature, due to that nature, we can go for more general accuracy measurement. And there are a few good accuracy measures uh, we can use uh, for this scenario. One of them will be precision, uh, which will give the probability, uh, which uh, gives the probability of predicting a true positive from all the positive prediction. Which basically we say that uh, if you put uh, in all those things that you have predicted as a positive, what percentage of them are actually positive? The other one is actually uh, the other uh, good measurement is recall, which gives the true positive rate. Which will say, if you have let's say n amount of anomaly in your data, how much of them has you has you predicted as anomaly actually in your data? So it's a ratio of TP over TP plus F. And the other uh, is like the thing is like a F1 score, which gives the like uh, some harmonic uh, mean of precision and recall. So precision and recall are the most suitable measurement uh, to, uh, for, for a model uh, that are positive in sense are like very less. And then uh, the PR uh, curve, uh, okay, it's a typo here. And F1 score are, are, are max, uh, are, will be a good way of measuring the performance of the model. Uh, PR curve is basically, uh, is like a, a curve of the precision I recall that you can actually see how, like what will be uh, the, the performance of the model based on precision recall. So these are the metric that we will use during uh, this session and probably the next session to see how we are actually performing. And precision and recall, are, as I said, are super important. And based on your need, you might 
want to look at one of them. It means, let's say, if you want to find all the anomalies in your data, and that's the thing that you is super important for you, then the thing that you're actually looking for would be recall. Recall would be how, like how many of the anomaly has been covered during the during my model. It means maybe those uh, uh, company that they are doing fraud detection, they want to be able to capture loss all the all the fraud. The cost is there will be loss of false positive as well. It means they might, they might call you lots of time and say, is, is there any something wrong? You said no. I said, okay. So it means, to, but the thing is, they want to be able to capture on all the anomalies. So they will, they, will accept have, they will accept having lots of false positive as well. But sometimes the precision maybe is important. It means whenever you're saying something anomaly, it should be anomaly. So they, they prefer that, uh, that the percentage of the thing that you're saying is positive is actually positive. So depends on your application, you will choose different metrics. And based on that metric, we can see how well all, all these models is performing. And uh, so as I said, for the next, for, for this workshop, we will try uh, some of these models that we described and probably uh, I will try to add maybe more even uh, model of clustering as well. We'll try all these models on some real data set. And uh, then using all these metrics, we will see how these uh, algorithms or methods are working on, on real data set. And then we should be able to compare them and see which one are, are, are the best uh, based on application and based on the, the distribution of the data that you have in your real data. And that's it. Uh, hopefully I'll see you in this workshop.